Greetings, one and all. I hope you're well. The Biodynamic M88 2023 version. Now, I've been planning on um, doing a kind of a deep dive into the M88. I'd had reason to start using the M88 again. I hadn't stopped, but it's been my main mic for decades. And uh, I had some technical issues with some of the condenser mics and the PA I'm using, which I shall go into as, in another video. And the safest option was to use a dynamic. So, of course, I use the M88. I have a few of them. And some of you may know I favoured the original through to the up to the TG, the black one, the toughened one, which I have, but wasn't so keen on, and made some comments about that. And lo and behold, I was looking to research the M88 for this uh, kind of a deep dive video I was going to do about how to use it, uh, as I think, you know, in the various versions that I have. And uh, I was looking at the price, I think, of the, the black one, which I've got as well, the new one. And when I looked, I saw there's another new one, 2023. And lo and behold, it looks much like the original. Something I like is that uh, I have criticised the Biodynamic website in the past, and maybe I was wrong, maybe I was missing it, but I always thought that Shaw with their SM58 had a nice historical thing and that they seemed proud of it. And uh, the Biodynamic didn't seem to, but on the website this time I found a lot which I like. So I'm going to go through that in just a minute. I've got here unboxing charts, accessories, etc. Well, that's in the other video, the details of it, in unboxing video, and some of it I shall go through when I look from above and do the closer stuff. I've got a few things to say about the mic bag and the clip. Wouldn't you believe it? But anyway, what do the manufacturers say, or what does the manufacturer say? So I said the website's good. Um... A little bit difficult to find I, uh, in that they've got a new series of mics, 2023, and it doesn't seem to be under the vocal mics. But then you go to more microphones or something, and eventually I, I found it there. You will be able to find it, I'm sure. But it um, hmm, doesn't seem to be under the vocal mics that I could see that were listed. Anyway, it's a dynamic moving core microphone. It says for kick drums, vocals, and more. So you probably know, if you know anything about this microphone, that it was um, used for kick drums because it goes low and it's fast. So it catches the transients of the kick drum and also give the body to the kick drum. doesn't mention double bass. I'd be interested in that. But anyway, maybe I'll try it someday. They go on to say it uh, has a wide frequency response, which we'll look at with detailed bass response, powerful output thanks to high sensitivity. So I think the new one, the 2023, I suspect uses neodymium magnets, whereas the originals obviously didn't. The TG apparently used neodymium, neodymium mag magnets. It says it has ex excellent directionality, we shall see, handmade in Germany. Well, I quite like that, don't know why. And it says, this is what I like, continuously handmade since 1963. Come on, big it up a bit, why not? Goes on to say, the M88 has a frequency response of 30 to 20,000 hertz. Woo, about the widest of any dynamic mic. Is it really that wide? We'll have a look. Uh, natural sounds free of tonal colouring. We'll have a look at that as well. It also delivers a clear signal at extremely high sound pressure levels, so they reckon you can be, have a lot of noise going on, it doesn't, it stays clear. It goes on about drums, guitar cabs, etc. I say, I'm wondering about acoustic double bass, which I don't mention. Aha, further down, it says, ideal for vocals. Okay, benefits from its excellent technical characteristics Detailed bass response, smooth treble boost, which we shall have a look at. It says it was originally developed for recording speech. And I've already mentioned they have got the neodymium magnets. So, good website with pictures, pictures and a sort of, what have I got, a warm confidence and a lack of bluster. Yes, it doesn't say big, bold, it's going to do this, that, or the other, or it's going to turn you into a good singer, or you can't live without it, or all this stuff which I get tired of, frankly. It mostly seems to go on from what I can say about good engineering and pretty much getting it as good as a microphone can be. And they mentioned made in Germany and handmade. Nice little boosters maybe for some. So that's there. You can go and have a look for yourself. Going back here, I'm going to look at the frequency response and the polar pattern, which I shall put on screen. Okay, on screen then you can see 
two graphs, well three, but the frequency graph you can see the actual, the graph from my actual microphone, which is rather more detailed. I'd say don't be put off by that because most people use a kind of smooth um, graph. So you look at this, you think, my God, that's all over the place. But bear in mind, uh, we're talking from naught in the, not the center of the picture, but you can see where zero is. And all those peaks at the top, the Himalayas, uh, go up to about five, yeah, maybe about five, because the 10 is the top line. And they say plus or minus 3 dB is uh, where humans start to notice human hearing. So it's, it's not as uh, perhaps as bad as you might think from looking at that. So I like that. I do like the old ones where they had a kind of ticker tape with, um, and it looks like a needle ink pen wobbling up and down on it. This is probably done digitally, I imagine. And it's pro probably more accurately expected to be by now. And, okay, no uh, proximity trace. So let's look at the other one in the booklet, which you can see. And it's smooth there, you can see. Uh, so I think it's interesting looking at this, because of course I know the microphone, so I'm trying not to let that influence me too much, but it's bound to, isn't it? So you can see it's got a, a broad lift, if we take that uh, zero dB line, a broad lift from about just below 2K and uh, up to, what, 15? 15, it goes back to zero, and then it does go to 20 hertz, -ish, but it's quite a way down. Anyway, but it's pretty, it's pretty impressive still. And then you've got the middle, where it's fairly flat in the middle section. And then if it's a fair distance off, the bass starts to reduce. So bring it a bit closer, and the bass holds up, but lifts a little. Of course, they're showing increments here. You could hold it just a little bit further away. So that's one of the things I've found you have to learn with it. If you bring it very close, you can see that there's an enormous uh, bass lift. So we'll be looking at that. Uh, Overall, if you were to sort of average that out and good it in a, have it in a reasonable position, you might expect a little bit of a mid-dip, I'm thinking, just by looking. Anyway, looking at the polar pattern, well, I just do it by, I prefer to listen really, but looks like many other hypercardioid polar patterns. So that's that. Okay, going to look at it close up, compare it size and weight and with an SM58 and uh, look at a few of the bits and bobs that came with it. So I'll get on with that just now. Okay, I've uh, already done an unboxing, so you know what uh, to expect. I'll take these out actually, because I might re refer to them later. Well, I might as well show you now. If you've seen the unboxing, if you haven't, there's this, which is um has got the averaged, I guess, trace polar pattern for various mics in the series. And this, which is rather nice, just a guide to the the M series, which is the new lot. And quite something about the M88. Well, you can get it on the website as well. History of the microphones made in Germany, M88 there. Some information about it. So that's rather nice, I think. Good quality as well. And as you've seen on the screen, this is just the individualized graph for my microphone. Fine. Now. Okay. Tough enough. A little bit, a uh, little bit droppy compared to, I know. So with all the other manufacturers, I said, uh, why don't, <laughs> why don't you just copy bio, biodynamic? See, I've done, I'll show you. So here I am, first of all, if I take it to a gig, which I have done, it's rather large. Well, I suppose you could just use one zip. It goes all the way around. But then, there's a bit of fiddling about, you know what I'm saying? Whilst you're holding this slightly slippy thing here. Okay, inside, very well uh, protected, so fair enough, I guess. And rather large because they've got room for your mic clip. I don't know, do you carry your mic clip with you? Maybe you do. You just put it in the back pocket if you need to. Do you really need it in the case? Or just clamp it onto the, the mic and have it in the bag, fits in the bag with the clip on, if you put it on the body anyway. So, 
For me, it stays home. Like, well, not all of them, but um, like a number of the rather fancier cases, because to me it's just not really very practical. Excuse my arm. There. So coming to this then, as you can see with this, the difference is, whoops, microphone's galore. The difference with this is that, um, all right, I put it, imagine the clip, so I'm going to show you something about the clip in a minute. I know. So there it is with the clip on. You hold it there, you're just not going to drop that. All right, not so much protection, I'm sure, as that, but less likely to drop it than that. Uh, and when you come to use it, it goes right round to the side, hand goes right in whilst you're still holding the bulbous end, and uh, you grab the barrel firmly, and that's the end of that. No, as good as it gets, seems to me. Anyway, I've said enough about that. Oh, it could be Italian leather, couldn't it? Ox blood. Yeah. On to the clip. I've always gone on about biodynamic clips before. We can see one here. Well, this one's okay. Don't try and do this, which I did immediately because it looks like it's parallel, which in fact it is, which suits the mic, of course. But uh, if you're trying to do that, forget it. It works in much the same way as the older clip. So you line it up with the kind of that V there. Differences then. It's much firmer than the older clip. You're unlikely to knock it out. Still possible if someone really whacks it. But you know, you can see there, I have to whack it. You have to be pretty deliberate. The other one, this, pretty though it is. You have to be a bit respectful because you can see how much. Uh, so, more likely to come out on the older clip. This one, you can adjust captive uh, end there. You can adjust the tension, which is good. This one, you can't. And I've have come across one in all the clips I've got that's got become loose. You can imagine there's a possibility of it because of wear, but uh, it doesn't seem very often. But I have come across one that's loose, and I imagine once it's loose, there's nothing you can do. I imagine. I don't know. That's how it seems to me, but I could be wrong. This one, of course, there's something you can do. But also, because it's got this screw here, it's perhaps more likely to cut to come loose. I've got one at work, K&M, which is well respected at the school there, and twice it's come a little bit sloppy and I have to keep remembering to bring a screwdriver in because I ended up using a pair of scissors. Not a good idea. Um, and also, I noticed that this doesn't take a, a coin head. So having it adjustable means it can come loose. And then you've got to tighten it up. Um, having it non-adjustable means it doesn't come loose until it's worn out. Take your pick more secure, still pops in and out, which I like. Pretty. What do you reckon? I'll leave that to you. Does the job. Can't remember which one I've got now. So leave that one out of the way for a minute. And look at uh, the sizes compared to Shores and 58. Perhaps a little longer, not much in it really. Weight. Hmm. Maybe a little heavier, not certain. Something about brass for me. I don't know. It's brass. Brass isn't alive. Well, everything's alive if you look at it one way. But there's something about brass to me that, uh, I don't know, just seems to have a bit of life to it. Anyway, the sound. You hear the brass there in the middle. Sound of this, which does seem to make a difference sometimes. So to me, everything fairly uh, musical compared to, I should show you an SM58, just in case you wonder what I'm doing. Sort of um, a bit dead and Mazak sounding. Nothing wrong with Mazak. Have a look, uh, have a look close up on the unboxing, but I'll just uh, see if I can spot anything. This is called filigree, by the way. I had to look it up. So they mentioned it on the website. The filigree is done by hand. It's done by hand, really? Can't be actually weaved by hand, surely. But anyway. I won't bother comparing to the older one because I'm going to do a video on that when I do the sort of deep dive thing. 
So you get the idea from this. That black chrome, not sure. Again, I prefer it to the uh, the TG that they brought out, the black one. This. Not really any movement that I can detect, maybe the slightest. And the slightest bit there. Bear in mind, people talk about, oh, it's built like a tank. Yeah, okay. First of all, this could be something of a crumple zone. You don't build cars. They deliberately stop building cars like tanks at the front because when there was an impact, the uh, front of the car would was deliberately designed to act as a crumple zone to limit the shock to the passengers, the people. So wouldn't that apply to this? Because this being as tough as a, a tank, what use is that if the shock um, breaks the in, inner parts, which is what you're worried about? If, it's, if it does this, you can probably get this replaced. So, and people say, yeah, they feel the weight of it. Yeah, it's like a tank, it's like a tank. Yeah, but it could be, a, it's pretty easy to make something heavy, isn't it? Just make it out of heavy, put some lead there or something. And probably fairly easy to make it tough and fairly crude if you've got a, that's probably easier to do than that. And I don't know. So it's easy to make things tough, I think, but is that really of any advantage? Is having a bit of a crumple zone not a better thing in terms of protecting the delicate inner parts rather than having the shock go straight to them and everything bounces several times on a concrete floor? Perhaps a bit of that, and then if it bothers you, repair it. You can take this off and gently hammer things out, but I'll go in that uh, detail in that in the other video there. I think that's about it. Oh, let's just see what the fit's like on a nitric connector. Very good, not too tight, no rattling around. Okay, time to get on with uh, what I notice immediately, I reckon. What I'm endeavouring to do here, obviously I'm very familiar with the uh, M88, so I'm trying to keep that out of the equation and just sort of pretend this is new to me. This is a new one, it's a 2023, but they've designed it to be as close as maybe to the ones I'm used to anyway. So uh, I'll try and put that to one side if I can. Let me get myself ready. So I'm gonna go from the Earthworks Ethos with an Icon Pro grill, as I've said before, because it's just that the big foam just uh, stops the pops, but it's also anything you put between the diaphragm. Is, uh, so this is, uh, but I've gotta be a bit careful with it. Gotta be careful. A few bits there, not to do too much of that or any of it, if possible. Moving then from straight on to the M88 2023. Now I'm on the M88 2023, and what do I notice immediately? I, I, I notice that compared to the Ethos. Let's go back. I, I, I on the Ethos. I, I, I moving across. I, I, I. I notice that at the top there. That's that broad lift we're aware of. And I notice a bit of Turn the ethos down. I balance these things up. Maybe moving closer or whatever. Yeah. So there's a little bit of that. Now I was wondering from looking at that a frequency response whether I could. Of course, it depends on where I put it. Got a load of that to take into account. I'm on the ethos. Is is that um. I might have expected it to be a little bit uh, sunk in the middle, depending on position. I suppose I'm just going to do things like this. I suppose I'm just going to do things like this. I suppose I'm just going to do things like this. I suppose I'm just going to do things like this. So to my ears, all of that is uh, lifted a little. Um, if I bring it closer, if I bring it closer, if I bring it closer, now we can hear a little bit of that uh, proximity, so a fair way away, and that tends to uh, balance up to some extent the stuff at the top, seems to me anyway. Seems to me anyway. Going to bring it closer still, going to bring it closer still, going to bring it closer still, and now you can hear, if you have the system and the headphones, but also the PA, you can hear that that uh, now alters the balance somewhat. 
If I bring it closer still, if I bring it closer still, let me just get proximity, but my voice isn't that low at the moment, so we're not really hearing what might be happening down there. If I bring it like that, uh, many people are going to find that too much. Well, it is. I find it too much. So, not there, unless you want to remove some bass, which I think I'm going to do now, seeing as I've sprayed my pots and it seems to work. Shall I go into that notes? Let me go across to the SM58 and I'll try and match them up. Now I'm on the SM58. Now I'm on the SM58. You can tell straight away. So that's got quite a bit of that, a little bit of that. It's peaks, got various peaks. Uh, the low end is kind of missing. So, and, uh, 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 it's the SM58. Uh, 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 moving across. Uh, 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 uh. On the M88, I'm aware of the, uh, uh, uh. I'm aware of that rise. There, there, there. And I think when I first did it, I was aware of my breath being more detailed, more revealed. There, 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 SM58. There, 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 M88. There, 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 SM58. There, there. I'm going to do that later on. So more of a kind of um, nothing so clear, more kind of compact, contained somehow in the... In, in many ways, in frequency, obviously, and also in details and so on. What have I got next? Back on the uh, ethos to rest our ears. So that's what I noticed immediately on this one, is uh, the rise at the top there. I noticed the willingness for the low end, depending on where you put it, to do its thing. And uh, I didn't really notice any mid, la any lacking in the mid. I didn't notice that. And I noticed the breath seem to be uh, well-defined, which kind of things you'd expect with a light diaphragm, I guess, and from looking at the frequency response. How am I invited to phonate and sing? How am I invited to phonate and sing? How am I invited to phonate and sing? Of course, hearing back, I'm aware. Huh. Hearing back, I'm aware. Huh. Hearing back, I'm aware. Huh. Hearing back, I'm aware of that weight underneath if I want to use it. So it's there. Top end. I could do with less, I think. This has got less than most. So it doesn't stick through. But uh, as you know, I probably am heading, heading towards flatter mics, really, most of the time. How am I f invited to finate and sing? How am I invited to finate and sing? How am I invited to finate and sing? About there, I think, works okay on my voice. If I'm going lower. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, gonna bring it a bit closer. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. oh, that's quite fun for me if I'm doing that kind of. Ah, ah, ah. Come on. Ah, ah, ah. Good lord. Ah, ah, ah. Closer still. Can I bear it? Here when I speak, it's no good, but. Ah, ah, ah. Back on the uh, ethos. So yeah, there's plenty to um, to use and to explore there, but as you can see here already, probably you've got to be a little bit careful. If you just put it in your mouth there and go for it, um, not, uh, not going to be so happy. Well, that's what I was going to do. If I do, if I don't want to put it in my mouth and go for it, here's what happens if I cut at 100 hertz. Now I've got 100 hertz. Oh, now I've got 100 hertz. I can come in really close. Ah, ah, ah. Uh, and you hear what happens, you get a bit of an SM58 thing going on. Is that I think that 100 hertz is too high, I don't like it, it leaves that top too exposed. This is it with a 100 hertz cut. This is the SM58, which has got more going on because I've cut 100 hertz. So, let's put the 100 hertz back flat, too high I think on this desk, I think 80 or 75 people, a lot of desks have. Anyway, so it happens that the bass, I don't know what the Q is of it, is 80, so let me take a little bit of the bass off. This is on the M88. Bring it in quite close. Bring it in quite close. And now reducing the bass all the way off. There. Uh, uh, uh. Bring it back just a little. Uh, uh, uh. Now let's go between the M88 and the SM58. This is the M88. This is the M88. This is the SM58. It's got a bit more. <laughs> this is the SM58. This is the M88. I'm going to bring the bass back in a bit. This is the M88. This is the M88. This is the SM58. 
This is the M88. This is the M88. Bit lower, isn't it? There, the uh, where the the push is, I think. Is because it's got a bit of, which is what I was going to talk about. I noticed playing, is that that lift on the Earthworks? Is that that lift really does come in? higher than you might imagine, or higher than I imagined anyway. And that's why I've noticed on female voices that it adds some warmth and why some female singers liked it. And I was thinking at the time, well, that you know, 30 hertz, it goes down to and burn. That's really, well, that lift is quite low. But, so if I do this, <laughs> that's quite considerable, isn't it? SM58. <laughs> Yeah, so the SM58 doesn't really um, in get any bass here, I don't think. So you can tell it's closer and it gets louder. Back on the M88. <laughs> Seems to me it gets, um, there's that lift. <laughs> Certainly there. Even if there. <laughs> of course. Definitely there. Definitely there. And they could blast uh, the speakers if you do that. Speakers if you do that. Still aware of that at the top there. Still aware of that at the top there. Yeah, you can hear compared to. The earthworks. Highs, lows, done the S's really on there, broad and uh, lift up there. I'll do the breath. I'm his breath. Well, we kind of did that. We. I did. So I don't know if you can hear, on the out breath is where, on this, you can hear into, I think, the detail. And there's less on this, not surprisingly. Just a little bit more sort of smoothed. Moving to the SM58. And altogether kind of grayer. You can't really hear. Gives a representation, gives you the idea of it. Some might say it gives you enough of the idea of it. Back on the Earthworks. Now, oh. S's, which is kind of done. Do them again with this just quickly through. F's kind of wind noise on the the grill and plosives. Let's see. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl sitting in a shoeshine shop. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl sitting in a shoeshine shop. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl sitting in a shoeshine shop. Shh 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 shh. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl sitting in a shoeshine shop. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl sitting in a shoeshine shop. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl, sitting in a shoeshine shop. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl, sitting in a shoeshine shop. Susie Susie Shoeshine Girl, sitting in a shoeshine shop. Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Who, who, has got a lot of low end stuff there. Not so much. Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? I can hear the headphones complaining on the SM58. Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Who do you think you're fooling? Fooling. 
who do you think you're fooling? So quite a lot of bluster on the SM58 and without the low end things, it doesn't go that low, but though you'd have to watch out for the low end. But again, coming to it in a minute, you've got to know what you're dealing with, I think. What about the pops on the uh, on the M88? I'm going to be careful here because I know already P Peter, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now the pops I'm hearing are the speakers hitting the end stops, headphones, so they're low. So um, if you wanted to, if you were clumsy that way, I've got some suggestions, but let me just roll the bass off a bit. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked, then you just get the that part, which isn't so bad. It's got the SM58, bear in mind it's got the bass rolled off. And that's foam, I'm sure, the, some of it, that's the air hitting the foam. It does very well with that, but the bass is rolled off. So, handling and induced noise. Didn't notice any induced noise. Handling noise. You've got to be careful. With that low end stuff as well down there. If I cut the low end, and you've still got the high end. So, altogether, that's going to be an issue for some people. SM58 handling noise, which is SM58 is good on handling noise, I find. Self induced noise, didn't notice any. Um, excuse me, didn't notice any. Um, that's uh, not my part, I didn't notice any. No point me putting it next to this, um, desk anymore because the old desk would cause them some mics to hum. This new one must be have better shielding or something because it hasn't caused any mic to hum so I haven't noticed anything is all I'd say. Now summary. I'm not um, talking about how it compares to the existing M88 it's just as a microphone itself and I can see that if you weren't used to this you could be quite put off handling noise there's a lot of it in low end stuff and that means cutting it but then if you're cutting it you're going to be cutting uh you're going to be cutting uh you know so what's the point so for me i don't play with it i've been using it for decades i don't play with it i used to use mostly handheld standing these days mostly in a stand oh we'll get some very low stuff on a stand. So if you've got it on a wooden floor or something um, on a tripod, you might be getting a bit of that coming through. If not, and it's on a stand and it's a concrete floor or it's well sorted, um, that won't be an issue. So for me, I don't fiddle with it and I have these switches on there. So when I do have to fiddle with it, I switch, and I switch it off. So it's a bit like doing this. And when I've got it in position, I switch it back on again. That's me. Uh, the low end I like because I use it when I need it I like because I use it when I need it I like I like I like because I use it when I need it I like because I use it when I need it I like because I use it when I need it I like I like I like because I use it when I need it I like because I use it when I need it I like because I use it when I need it if I don't bring it in I like, because I use it when I need it. I like, still there, but I like. So, enough of that. It is what it sounds like at a distance, because I nearly forgot all this lot of stuff. So it's a hypercardioid, a distance. So still picking up pretty well there, as you can hear. It's quite some distance away. Still picking up. What about the bass? Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. It's there, it's quite natural, actually. It's not ex accentuated. Bring it in a bit already, you can hear. So it's quite gentle as it comes in. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. And just there, there's a, not an increment, because they're not increments, but it's when I notice there's something, there's something. That's quite a good position for a balance. There's something, there's something. Coming closer now, there's something, which makes the S's at the top a little less, um, stand out a little less, but there's a pop there, because I'm facing it, because I normally do to the side, as you know. There, something, there. So that's what that sounds like. With the pops, again, as I've watched my video on pops, Control it with your breath first of all, if you can, but if that makes you sad, some of my students forget it. Here's the difference. Watch the speakers again. P 
Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Now, if I'm going to be clumsy, which I won't, you can imagine you've heard it before in this, what I've just done. That's straight on. If I then bring it to the side, as you know, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. It does catch me out occasionally on a gig if I'm clumsy, but mostly pops sorted for me. Beyond that, you could use one of these. It's something I'm going to do. When I do the deep dive on this, the f make a nice looking one, somebody, please. I'm going to stick this on there. There is an M88 foam, which I've got for the TG. Just, uh, it must be possible to make one that looks nice. Or well, not nice, at least doesn't look ugly. Anyway, so there's that. Control, control there, or use a foam if you have to. Reduce the base if you have to. But then you think, why bother? You know, Maybe it's not for you. Uh, this is what it's like on uh, on axis. This is what it's like as I come round to the side. This is what it's like as I come round to the side. Still quite even, sounds much the same to me. Coming round to the side. Coming round, starting to hear there. Coming round to the side. Coming round to the side, and then coming round to the side. Coming round to the side, and all you can really hear is mostly the my voice bouncing off the ceiling in the room. Coming round to the back. Coming round to the back, and there's a, lo a lobe there for the hypercardioid. Coming back round to the sides, you can hear there's where it's quite tight on the rejection, and uh, obviously the tone change is quite considerable. But it's not it's quite reasonably benign. And uh, coming round, coming round, coming to the front. As I was uh, preparing for this, it did occur to me that it's uh, very nicely made, by the way. I mean, yeah, no, I didn't spot anything at all. Just feels like solidly engineered, nicely made, no nonsense. What it did remind me of using this is really, I was going to say a Ferrari, but no, let's use a German car, because it's German. Uh, the Porsche 911. I always fancied one because I had a Volkswagen Beetles, which is rear engined and air cooled and so on. And then I went on and had a van. Um, I've had vans ever since I took one now. Of course, the diesel and the engines at the front. But the first two vans I had were rear engined as well. Uh, air cooled first one, and then they put a water jacket on the Type 3, and then they changed to diesel and a completely different layout. So, of course, in those early Volkswagen Beetle days, I always fancied the Porsche because it's like when you saw these souped up Beetles. But I, was, so I read a fair bit about them, and I had the experience actually in the Beetle thing with those is you've got all that weight on and behind the rear wheels uh, which gives the rear wheels they can dig in if you start to go around a corner or you go around a corner and you you, you figure you're going too fast you take your foot off the acceleration and touch the brake all that weight as you're turning all that weight at the back just and you end up facing the other way which happened to me in the beetle it was so quick I'm very lucky it all worked out fine I just ended up on your down a, another road facing in the right direction to, to carry on driving to turn back onto the main road and go uh, but just so I, I, I was reading about it and people think I think there were training courses where if you had, I've had the money the means to buy one of these which I haven't never never had had uh, like the idea of it but you go on a training course on a skid pan so you've got to realize oh yeah because what they did say sometimes is that if you're not if you're ridiculously fast then you've had it but if you've misjudged it slightly rather than take your foot off and have that go on with the back just waiting to come round that you put your foot down slightly which caused the back to sit down and grab and they said you go around the corner like a rocket and come out like an arrow but of course uh, you'd probably need to practice that and get the feel for that a few times before just trying that on the streets or if it occurred you know by accident something happened and you had to do that you have had the experience of yeah okay let's put my foot down a bit and get around so with this I think it's a bit like that. If, you, if you're going to, I'm going to bring this right down. I think it's going to get too much. But if you could, if you're going to, um, did I hear something on my sliders? Don't tell me they're going. Anyway, if I, if I'm going to use it, like, I'm going to bring the volume right down, because you know, if, if you're going to use it like this, well, then it's absolutely useless, isn't it? I mean, pointless. What I'm going to do? Take, let me take the bass off. I've got it right up to my mouth. So let me roll the bass off. Okay. So now, now it's kind of usable, but right up here. So you could use it for if you want to sing like that. Just take the 80 hertz off. Go. You've still got a fair bit of that because it's right up here. So you've got all that proximity, but I've rolled it off. So now you've got something you can use, maybe. So now you've got something you can use right up against your lips. But of course, bring the bass back in, leave it flat. So I can imagine people trying that in a shop or something or trying this mic out on a gig for the first time and thinking, wow, can't be doing with that. So you've got that issue. You've got this issue. 
So you, you've got to deal with that, like the Porsche 911, you've got to deal with uh, uh, what it is. But I think, for me, like the Porsche 911, I imagine I've done my training course and I rarely get caught out. And then for me, it means I can, uh, for me, it means I can, uh, for me, it means I can Peter Piper for me. It me Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. No problem. For me, no handling noise either. Why is that then? Because I'm not fiddling about with it. For me. But I can see that for many people, hmm, bit of a learning curve. Anyway, I'm going to see uh, what a man thinks about it. Maybe you're poor, maybe you have wealth Maybe in demand or maybe the baby on the shelf Whatever your situation, there's one thing you should do Reject all automation, let me work on you I'm Mr. Man, you other man is not my style uh, I like to manually manipulate you Guaranteed to make you smile Thank God, Mr. Man Auto manage no must die. They call me Mr. Manual. Automatics not my style. I like to manually manipulate you. Guarantee to make you manually manipulate you. Guarantee to make you manually manipulate you. Guarantee to manually manipulate you. Guarantee to make you. Guarantee to make you smile. I like to manually manipulate you. Guarantee to make you smile. El instrumento del artista.